It's time for another update on the Lotus electric car project with Sasha from On Point Dino. It's even got a name now. Blue Lightning? So Blue Lightning, Sasha, what's that all about? The reason the name sounds terrible yeah. is because I was 13 when I came up with it. Okay. It sounds like about a 13-year-old's yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. I used to draw cars, and I, I don't know why, but I picked Blue Lightning. Okay. And now we're building electric cars, so it sounds fitting. Has, it, has progress happened since we were last here, Pete? It looks about I the think, same. I think there has. There's a the, hole in the back of the car. Oh, that's true. There's a gaping hole here. Maybe we should talk about that first. This used to be all firewall, right? Yeah, there was a fiberglass firewall that came down here, and the, this was all an aluminum structure that covered the gas tank as well. Okay. So now we've got um, got this all cut out so that we can get the batteries as far forward as possible. Right. And we tried to decide whether we wanted to leave this intact or not, and we ended up just cutting it out so we can have the batteries a little bit further forward. This uh, allows you to move the batteries forward, does it? Okay. Yeah, before we were going to have one battery in front and one behind. Oh, I see. So now we've got one in front and one so they're going to go in this way? If, is that how they're going to go in? So like you've got like three sections? They're going to go right. In. So there's um, three large batteries that slide in Yeah. this way at the bottom. Yeah. And then there's three smaller batteries that sit horizontally at the top, oh, on the okay. top shelf that we've built. And that top shelf, we had a fabricator come in, give us a hand with it. There's uh, some roof nuts that we've put in I here. see that, yeah. And then there's a bar that's basically the platform for those batteries. Okay. Unfortunately, you guys just missed it because we just sent it out for powder coating. Okay. But we had it all here mocked up a few days ago. And you so. also sent out the rear... Yeah, exactly. What is that called? The, the whole rear, rear frame, I guess. Frame? Okay. Um, that went out to powder coat too, and you've modified that a fair bit? Right. Yeah, we've mocked everything up, and it looks really good. The motor and the batteries, everything's fitting really well. Okay. Um, and up to this point now, we've kind of tested all of the individual components and gotten them working. So we've actually gotten the motor on the dyno. Okay. Um, and we, we maxed out one of the volt batteries. Wow. So we were at about 280 wheel horsepower at 700 amps of current. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's pretty... Uh, it's a good start. Yeah, it's definitely a good start. I mean, with one battery, what happens is when you put a lot of load on a battery, mm -hmm. the voltage of that battery drops. Okay. And as the voltage drops, the potential power you can get drops. Sure. Because if you remember your grade 10 physics or whatever, yeah. it's power is your amps times your volts. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we got 700 amps. Yes. And we only had about, I can't remember now, but I want to say about 300 volts or 280 volts or so. Oh, okay. And so we plan to have about 1300 amps with yeah. the two batteries and hopefully the voltage sag will be a little bit, a little bit better. So we'll probably be closer to about 340 volts. Beautiful. Um, which should make for about 450 horsepower. Which is more than this car came with from the factory. Yeah, we were at 250. And this is wheels. like instant torque too, which is... This thing, when you saw it, on the, when you watched it on the dyno, you guys will cut to a video of it, but yeah. it's quite scary. We yeah. had it in a little subframe strapped to the wall yeah. on the dyno and it was frightening. I was pretty hesitant. The throttle, like the throttle pedal, was on my my hand. Yeah. On the table, and it was just rolling into it. You it was... could see the strap stretching and everything. The suspension, you know. Wow. Supposed to be solid, but it was all flexing. And... So you need to come up with a better rig to dyno test this on. You think? For I safety? think for the two batteries, next time it's just got to be in the car. In the car, of course. So that's where we're at now. We're we're hoping in about two weeks we'll be good to go with final okay. assembly. So just to backtrack for a second, you've had it on the dyno. You were controlling it with the MoTeC? Is that what you were doing? We've got kind of a, a complicated control system. Okay. The MoTeC is basically the, being used as a vehicle controller. Okay. So it's gonna, it talks to all the different modules. It takes all the switch and sensor readings in and makes decisions and does control strategy of all the different functions like the battery control, um, the charging, right. what the driver wants, throttle mapping, and, okay. and things like that. But the actual control of the motor, there's still the OEM Tesla controller in here. Oh, okay. And for any of you guys that are, that are used to or, or know about flashing OEM ECUs, a Tesla controller is about 10 times more complicated than even a new BMW ECU would be. Really? The Tesla controller actually even does its own immobilizer 
over CAN. Okay. So even if you had one Tesla controller that you cracked, you couldn't do the same thing with the next Tesla controller. Okay. Because it's a different immobilizer and a different code, basically. Really? That you need. So um, we've got, I think I told you in the last video about uh, our clever friends in Switzerland. Yes. So they've developed a motor controller, okay. and we've sent them the Tesla motor controller, and they've flashed it. Oh, wow. So their controller uh, sends the messages to keep the Tesla motor controller happy. Yeah. And then our Motec controller communicates with the two of these units. Really? So it's, it's, it's pretty complicated. There's a lot going on There's there. A lot yeah, going on, yeah. But uh, it's not something that we have the knowledge or the ability to do on our own. Okay. So, um, but you actually have a system in place now where you feel confident you're going to be able to get this thing to behave the way you want it to behave. We're getting there. We definitely have a little bit more testing to do, but the main reason for the initial dyno testing was um, to make sure we weren't in limp mode. Okay. A common problem with guys trying to get these Tesla motors going is they kind of get stuck in a limp mode, yeah. which limits you to about 70 kilowatts of power. Okay. Um, and so luckily we were able to exceed that. We made about 280 horsepower, so we're not in limp mode anymore. Right. Um, but the one thing that's not working for us yet is the regenerative braking. Okay. So that we still have to sort out. Is that something you're going to work on with the guys in Switzerland? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. In the first update on this build, Sasha talked about classing up the interior, and I can see there's already been some of that going on with your fancy Alcantara covered dash. You had that done locally, did you? Yeah, the guys at Diamond Trim and Aurora did it for us, and they did a really nice job. I don't know if you remember seeing the when we first fit the dash <coughs> in there, it wasn't looking like it was going to fit at all. Yeah, it looked like it'd be tough. Yes, yeah, so now we're kind of at a point with the car where we're going to start wiring everything together. Okay. Um, bringing the dash into the ECU and the ECU into all of the other, um, both the OEM car stuff and obviously the, the electric vehicle right. stuff. So it's, it's pretty exciting. And you were saying that you'll be able to display anything on that dash you want to, either from the MoTeC or from the, the other computer that controls the electronic side of things? Yeah, basically all the information gets fed into the MoTeC M150. Okay. And from there it sends it all to the dash and we can, can, we can display everything. I mean, we can display um, power and, and state of charge and all the stuff you'd expect to see in a normal electric car. And we can also display lap times and predictive lap times and all the nice. motorsport stuff yeah, from the yeah. MoTeC dash you'd expect. So it'll be this cool blend of yeah. economy and performance. And it's totally customizable in terms of the graphics. You can design your own graphics for it. Exactly, it'll be totally the, I mean, we're going to shoot for something kind of like a new Audi, just with a kind of dark background and clean look. white needle gauges type of thing. It's going to be pretty, very cool, pretty fancy, I think. And you were also talking about there being a, a maybe the addition of a paddle on the left side of the steering wheel for regenerative braking. Is that what exactly, it is? Exactly, yes. So um, you're used to paddle shift cars, the left paddle is to downshift. Well, yeah. with this car, we'll have a paddle there and it'll be, <coughs> it'll be used to the more you squeeze on it, the more regen you're going to get out of the motor. Okay. Um, and it's going to basically get rid of the need of you for using the brake pedal in day-to-day -day driving. Really? That's so crazy to think that just ignore the brake pedal, just use the regen. And not only are you slowing down, but you're making more power to go faster again. That's it's a right. crazy circle of life happening here, people. <laughs> so the brake pedal then would be something like in an emergency situation or at the racetrack, obviously, you're going to use right. the brake pedal. So the reason for the regen paddle rather than the throttle, is if you're at the racetrack, you don't want to come off the accelerator pedal. And every time you come off the accelerator pedal, um, say you're in the middle of a corner and the motor's trying to brake as much as it can. Yeah. And then you're always constantly having to feather the throttle pedal exactly in the right spot. It. Yeah, and it's yeah. not really a good feeling. So the, the throttle pedal will always just go to like a coast, mm -hmm. the way you would be used to with a gasoline engine. Yeah. And the regen will be used um, both on the racetrack and on the road to request regen from the motor. Okay. And the brake pedal, we've gotten rid of the booster, and it's just a manual brake pedal now hmm. um, with an adapter we've built, and it'll give you a really nice um, feel on the racetrack, just like if you had uh, you know, manual brakes in a race car with dual pedal box type of thing. Crazy, okay. So when you're on the racetrack and you hit the brake pedal, will regen happen, or do you also have to use the left paddle if you want regen happening at the racetrack? Um, it'll all be customizable, so we'll have different modes, and based on which mode it is in, we'll, we'll tune it and see what we like best. Okay. Because the, the MoTeC will know the brake pressure. Right. So it'll be able to request regen either by the paddle or from the brake pressure. Yeah. Input. I just know how simple I am to have to brake and regen at the same time would be difficult for, right. for me to get my brain wrapped around. So if you can program it so that when in track mode, the pedal also engages some level of regen, that, that would be... Yep, totally possible. That would be DP spec right there. <laughs> Everything about this car must be DP spec. He doesn't know it yet, but... 
We'll in fact, the, the regen panel, I mean, if you get advanced, it could even get to the point of kind of being a, a dynamic brake balance adjustment. So mm. you're kind of coasting into a corner or like yeah. a hairpin, yeah. and you're getting rid of understeer, so you kind of almost squeeze that a bit. Yeah. And it would basically just be like a little bit of rear brake bias. Type That's a pretty rotate. cool idea. Yeah. I like the way this guy's brain thinks. I guess that's a wrap on this update. Sash, what are we gonna see next time we come for a visit? Well, the next couple of weeks, we hope to start reassembling everything. So okay. we should have the motor in, the batteries in, the frame, all that stuff in the back coming together. Okay. Um, once this big harness gets built, we'll be powering up the dash and getting this thing spinning on the dyno with both batteries. Very cool. Yeah. So you think next time we come, we might actually get to see it on the dyno? I hope so. There you go, folks. Next time, dyno action.